Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects Extend Script tutorial. In this one, we're going to be going over how to convert audio to markers, or in this particular case, uh, once the audio reaches a certain level, add a marker and give us that level. So what I have here is just a simple little song, and when I run this, it's going to create a marker whenever the audio reaches above my threshold, which I've set up, in this case to be 50. So essentially what's going to happen is our script is going to convert the audio to keyframes of whatever audio we select and then it's going to use the both channels and whenever it reaches above a certain value it's going to place a marker in that spot. This is super useful if you want to automate things, uh, calculate edit points, there's so many possible things you can do with just setting markers um, and that can be used later to do so many different things as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll just create a new JavaScript file and first we're going to start by creating a begin and end undo group so that way whenever we execute all of our code we can easily click on undo and everything will undo rather than us having to go step by step. So I'm going to start by saying app dot begin undo group and inside of the parentheses for this method we need to put in the text which it will say um, whenever we say undo in this case sound to markers so I'm just going to put in sound to markers and then I'll have an app dot end undo group with parentheses and everything I put between these two statements here is going to be easily undoable in one click all right, so now we need to set up a few variables, the first of which is going to be our threshold. What is the minimum value that audio needs to be in order for us to say, hey, add a marker in this spot? Um, by default, I'm just gonna set this to 50. Usually around 20 to 30 will produce a lot of markers and anything less will take a long time. So threshold of 50 is usually pretty good. As you can see, it's pretty sparse out and will also depend on the intensity of your audio. Then because we're going to assume there's already a composition open, we're going to say of our comp is equal to our app.project and the active item, which we have a select comp here. And then we're also gonna to need to get our audio layer, which we're also going to make another assumption, in this case that it's already selected and that it's the only selected layer. So I'm gonna say audio layer is equal to our comp.selected layers. And I'm gonna grab the index zero of the selected layers because um, we're implying there's only one selected and that's the zero with index. So just to make sure we're getting the right values, what I like to do before we get too deep into the code is make sure my variables are not um, messed up or null. So I'm going to alert the comp.name and the audio layer.name. And once I run it, I'm gonna get the name of my comp and the name of my layer, which is perfect. Now we can move on by doing the command to convert the audio to keyframes. Because we need to have a layer selected before we can run convert audio to keyframes, um, we're actually already in business because our audio layer is equal to the only selected layer. So what we're gonna do is say app.execute command. And because this command can vary from different versions of After Effects, um, I believe normally the number is like 50, 53 or something. But the way to make sure you get it no matter what After Effects version you're using is within this to say app dot find menu command id and in here we're going to put the string of whatever it is we want to find so if you right click on our audio go to keyframe assistant the text is convert audio to keyframes the lowercase two so you can go ahead and type that make sure you type it in exactly because it is case sensitive and now if we go ahead and run this you can see now it's going to go ahead and convert that audio into an amplitude layer so now we need to tell the program that the new layer one is going to be our sort of key layer or whatever. So I'll just say null layer is equal to app or is equal to comp.layer1 because once we do the convert audio to keyframes, it creates this new null layer on top here. All right, now I'm going to set up my main function called create markers. And inside of this, I'm going to need a few variables. So let's go ahead and define it down here. Function create markers. And what, what things are we going to need? Well, I know for sure we're gonna need threshold because that tells us um, what value needs to be set. And then we also are gonna probably need our layer as well as this both channels. So instead of just saying this create markers function is only gonna apply for both channels, effects, or properties, 
I'm going to just bring in any property. So that way, say we had something else we converted to keyframes, um, we could take that property and create markers for that threshold as well. So we're just trying to make this as uh, modular as possible so that it can work in many cases. So we have our property we need and a threshold. And the last thing we should probably get is the uh, null layer here. So we'll just call this the uh, key layer. And that can be meaning it's the important layer or it has keyframes on the layer, whatever you want it to mean. So then back over here, when we call this function, uh, we need first a property. Now the property is gonna be referring to this audio amplitude layer and we want the both channels. You can use right or left channel if you have specific audio that has different panning. Um, but in my case, I'm just gonna use both. So I'm going to grab my null layer, which references this. And then using our uh, property, we're gonna grab Adobe Effect Parade. And then I'm gonna grab the property called both channels. Or I can actually just grab property three because anytime you apply this uh, convert audio to keyframes, it creates three effects. Um, so actually in reality, what I should actually do is say no layer dot effect three because we know it's always going to be the third effect, this both channels. And uh, the property one or the slider is what has all these keyframes that we need to analyze. So the property is gonna be effect three, both channels, property one, the slider. Um, and then we need the key layer, which is just the null layer itself. And then we're also going to need the threshold value, which we can just grab and put it there. And again, when I create new functions or get too deep into the code, I like to again, double check that all my variables are not wrong or they're coming in properly. So I'm going to do some right lines, my property, my key layer and my threshold. And when I run it, I'm going to get a property, an AV layer and a 50. I could check the names um, if I'm really that not sure if I'm getting the right values, but as long as I'm not getting null, I know that I'm getting proper layers. So as you can see, we get slider for the property name, audio amplitude for the key layer name, and 50 for the threshold. All right, now the last thing we're gonna do is loop through all of the keyframes. Now this might seem like a very slow process, which is why I said the lower your threshold is, the longer this is going to take. Because the more keyframes we can skip over, the faster this whole process is gonna go. But essentially what we're gonna do, we're gonna start at this keyframe here, go to the next one, and on every keyframe, we're gonna check the value. If this value of the slider goes above or is equal to our threshold, then we're going to create a marker with whatever that value is um, attached to it. So what we need to do inside of our create markers function is create a for loop and we wanna loop through our property, um, all of the keyframes. So the way we're gonna do this is start at var i is equal to one because the first keyframe is the index one. And then for i is less than or equal to our property dot num keys increment i by one. So this is just a way to loop through all of the keyframes in any given property, check the number of keys, start at one, and go until it's less than or equal to the number of keys. Then, essentially each time through this for loop, it's gonna be the next keyframe. So we're gonna say if the current key is above the threshold, so we can say if something is above or equal to our threshold, then what do we wanna do? We wanna create a marker. Yes, we have a create markers function, but we're gonna go through here and each time create a marker. So what is our check? What it needs to be greater than or equal to our threshold? It needs to be our property dot key value i. So the key value will grab the value of whatever keyframe um, of the index you give it. You can also use key time and get the time at which this certain keyframe occurs. But in this case, I want the value. If the value is greater than or equal to the threshold we gave it, then we want to create a marker. So I'll create a function called create marker. And there's gonna be two things I want here. I want the marker property, and I'm also gonna want a custom keyframe object, um, which I'm gonna create just an array with a keyframe value and time. So I'll just call this key array. And essentially, I'm gonna set these up right up here. So for the marker property, I'm going to grab our key layer dot property Adobe marker. And this will reference um, whatever property holds all of these markers we can apply here. And then for our key array, again, I'm gonna get two things. The first one I'm gonna get is our property dot key value at I. And then the other one is gonna be the time, which I had previously mentioned. So the property dot key time at index i. 
And now we have our marker property in our key array. Let's one more time say right line. We wanna get our marker property. I wanna grab the name of it. And then I'm going to also show off our key array. So we're just getting um, an error on this. It's because I often type in right line incorrectly. So if I run this, we're gonna get a bunch of alerts actually. Essentially what I think is happening here is, essentially what I forgot to do is instead of using parentheses with our key value and key time, I used um, an index indicator. So now if I rerun this, we're gonna get, every time through it's gonna tell us this is our marker property, and this is the key value and key time at which it occurs. So we're pretty much done now, we just need to actually have the marker creation process. So in order to do this, we're gonna create a new marker object called my marker. And we're gonna set this equal to a new marker value. And the value we need to give it is the value of the marker. So in this case, we just want our key array and zero, which contains again our key value. But our key value, as you can see, has all these decimals. So what I'm also gonna do is say math.floor and just make sure we have a real number without any uh, extra things in there. And then lastly, we need to tell this marker where to apply itself. So I'm going to say my marker dot set value at time. And then we're going to need a value. So we're going to need a, a time, which we have contained in our second index of our key array. And we also need the object to set it to, which is my marker. So hopefully now if we run this nice simple bit of code, we can get it all to work. So I need to, instead of using my marker, use my marker property and set that value. And we'll try it again here. So as you can see, we're getting a bunch of nice markers with all of our numbers, 50, 52, 54. And if I change the value of my threshold, say 25, this time we should get a lot more markers. As you can see, it's taking a second to process. Um, and we're gonna have to zoom in here. There's quite a few more markers, but it is constrained to the laws we gave it in that anything equal to or above the threshold uh, is going to have a marker applied. So you can use this to separate out different areas of audio with markers, to look up uh, edit points. There's so many possibilities you can do with this. In just a bit of code, I tried to simplify this actually more than the uh, example code I gave. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave the thumbs up and of course hit subscribe and the bell icon next to it to be notified of new uploads. We're just about to hit 10,000 subscribers 10 years later. So make sure you guys hop on the bandwagon and learn about scripting. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you in the next one.